After saying that the fate of the recently executed Lawan Andimi should inspire all Nigerians, President Mohamed Buhari has gone further to the 90% of Boko Haram victims in the past years were Muslims. However, the Christian Association of Nigeria can disagrees as it refuted the president's claim, saying the federal government has no facts or figures to support this claim. Joining me to discuss this this evening is Francis Chilaka, a political analyst. Good evening to you, Francis. Thank you. Good evening. Yes, let's, let's start off this way. Should the war against insurgency be drawn on religious divide in the first place? That's the problem we have in this country. Yes. Um, we have failed to, to live as one, and we have allowed religion to become part of our governance. And until we are ready as a people, to keep religion one side and face governance the other side, nothing will work. Mm. So this is what is playing out. You know, and I think there's something this presidency had with 90%. It started with after its victory in 2015, it became 90%, 5%. Mm. Yeah. Now it's another 90%. Yes. So I, and I would say this, um, I keep saying it, those who manage um, the publicity of Mr. President or those who write speech for him need to do a lot of homework. There are certain things you don't put in the public, especially in a country that is so volatile right now. Where when it comes to issue, issues yes, of religion. Yes, yes it, you know, religion tears a country apart. Yeah. I mean, we were all witnesses to a lot of countries that have been torn apart because of religion. And then, so anybody who is going to be talking, even if you're standing on the pulpit and you're going to be saying something, you must be very sensitive. And I think our leaders have failed to apply emotional intelligence when they're passing their messages across. Yeah, now we, we did say earlier, the president coming out to say 90% of those who have been attacked by these insurgents and Boko Haram uh, are largely, they're not Christians. Um, where the Khan has come to refute this. Should the president have made such a comment in the first place? He shouldn't have. Yeah. He shouldn't have. Um, what a president should be doing is a father figure. And as a father, he, there are certain things you don't say to your children. You don't begin to, you have two kids. You can't say this one is better than this one. Yes. Because when you do that, you're killing the morale of one of, the, the, one of your children against the other. Yes. And then you're going to create a friction between your two children. And I think that is what uh, Khan is actually saying, that Mr. President shouldn't have made that statement. Yes. No, matter, no matter, even if he thinks it is true, even if he thinks that in his own conscience and with the facts available to him, but then you, you, don't, you don't throw it open. Not at this point in time when there's so much suspicion yes. in the land. Yes. Now, I mean, Khan has come out to refute the president's claim, saying there are no, there are no stats to back up his figures of 90% being Muslim, largely um, being, being attacked. What do you think is pivotal for the administration of President Mahmoud Bari, given the security situation right now? You see, the thing is, um, whether we like it or not, uh, this presidency has also helped to create uh, doubts in the minds of Nigerians. You know, the, the wave of suspicion that is going on in the country, this presidency has, you know, added flame to it. Because if you listen to what Khan said, they have told you clearly that all the, um, those in charge of the security apparatus are from the north. Yes. So it doesn't give you that... Um, Sense of, sense, sense of, of belonging. Inclusion. Because don't forget, Nigeria is a multi-ethnic country. Yes. So if you're going to be having different um, chief of army staff, chief of this staff, this and that, and then you're taking them from just one, one region. region, then there's a problem. So you're creating suspicion. Do, do you think that was deliberate? What, was, uh, that, was that an oversight? Or do you think that no, was, no, that I, was think, I think Mr. President has come out. I remember, was it last year, he said something that, or earlier this year, he said, it is the people he trusts. But in a country like Nigeria, you can't say you only trust people from your own ethnic group and not trust others. You're already creating a problem. And this is where, the, this is where everybody's hinging on. And I believe that it is time that Mr. President should take a serious look at the security architecture and change the service chiefs. They have long overstayed they're welcome. Okay, you're one of those who believe that it's time for the service chiefs to be reshuffled for them yes. to go. But let's look at it critically. If he's saying he cannot, when it comes to matter of security, which is very pivotal to every country, and says he can only work with people he trusts, and unfortunately, most of those people he trusts come from the northern region. Should we, should we hold him, should we blame him for that? You should blame him because, Why? you see, 
Also, you, you, you must also look at the issue of the quota system, okay. which you have, which you have all, always been applying. Now, if you apply the quota system, what it means is that every region should have somebody in the security um, service. Okay. And I don't think, honestly speaking, I don't think Mr. President uh, has been sincere and fair when he says that it is only people from... Because what you're saying is that you're like saying, okay, this, are the, this part of the country is... I am voted in for this part of the country. So whatever I'm doing is for this set of people. It is wrong. And that's what everybody is saying. Mm. When you have a mixture of, you know, the three major of ethnic groups together, you would also find out that those you don't trust, you have to start trusting them. When people want to get married, you don't, you don't, most times you don't even know the woman you want to marry. You just meet her, but you need to build a relationship. Trust and is you earned. build, to, and you, you need trust to build the trust. Yeah. You need to build it. Yeah. It doesn't grow overnight. So I think, I think Mr. President should, as a Democrat, which he claims to be, he should begin to, you know, think like one. You should begin to think like now, a democracy. Let's, let's look at the, the architectural structure of Nigeria security-wise and the, the quota system you also did, just mentioned now. Don't you think that's also part of our problem? Everything has to go in a certain way. And if it doesn't, then we all, we all have agitations. We all have issues with it. I mean, shouldn't it be who can do the job, regardless of whatever um, geopolitical zone they're from? Must we go about our politics, our democracy, in quota system and geopolitical zones? That's Must what, we that's, always that's, do that? That's why some of us are calling for the shredding of the 1999 constitution. constitution yeah. Because the constitution says, we the people of Nigeria. Honestly, I'm a Nigerian. I don't yes. know when they start to come up with that constitution. Not the people from the South South. No, we the people from the North South. Yes, it we, says, yeah. we the people of Nigeria. And that document does not reflect the will of the Nigerian people as at today. The world has moved on. I mean, a few years back, we didn't have uh, Android phones, we didn't have GSM, but we have them today. Analog phone is gone. People have changed. So why can't the government change? Why can't government sit down to say, this document everybody's been complaining about, it is time to do something about it. Why must we keep you know, staying in the same hole for too long? I mean, we must, we must move on as a nation. And the only way we can move on is, let us look at that document. There are a lot of things in that document that do not agree with the so-called Nigerian people. Yeah. And that is why I have agitation all over the place. Now, so many people have called for the 1999 constitution to be amended, even actually blaming it for the cost of the great deal of the corruption we have in Nigeria. Um, and for that to happen, there, there's got to be a, a, re a restructuring. The country has to be restructured. Do you think the present administration is ready for that? Well, the, the, this is one of the promises of this administration. Yes. That they were going to restructure Nigeria. And, well, this is their last lap. I haven't seen anything in that light. And I don't think they have the political will to do that. Why? Why would you say that? Because there's nothing happening. We keep going in circles. I mean, it, it's in the news. South, Af South Africa, the former South African president, Zuma, a court just issued arrest warrant. Because why? It, there's a system. The system checkmates whatever you're doing. So we need a system in Nigeria. What we have in Nigeria is an ad hoc system. I wake up as a president, I make my own rules. Yes. You live there tomorrow, another president comes, he makes his own rules. It is filtering down to the governors, to the senators. You know, so we ju we're, just, we're just doing as if we do not even know what we want in this country. So the time to sit down, I would say this to Mr. President. He has, God has given him a second chance to life. Let us say the way it is. And I believe that that second chance is for him to make Nigeria a better place. And the only way to make Nigeria a better place is to begin to restructure Nigeria. We cannot continue to be the way we are in this 21st century. We cannot. Nothing is moving in this country. And we all know that. Now, I think where, where this administration has achieved some milestone, it's only right for us to give credit to them. Um, would you say since the inception of the administration of President Mahmoud Bari, there's been... Has there been any notable change when it comes to security? Knowing that they came on the mantra, their campaign, their mantra was they were going to secure the, the missing Chibok girls and provide adequate security. Boko Haram will be wiped out. Can we, can we score them on this regard? On paper, yes. yes. Boko Haram has been decimated, but in the real sense, we know that it has not. And the only thing that helps a government to gain the trust of the people is to tell the people the truth, the way things are. We know how much has been expended fighting Boko Haram. But yet, they seem to be one step ahead of our security. And why is that so? Something is wrong. Something is wrong with the security architecture. 
So if anybody is saying that, no, nothing is wrong, we're, 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 we're winning the battle, we're winning the war, we're not winning the war. It is not a war, Boko Haram is not just a war for the North East. Yeah. It's not a war for the North. Yeah. It's a war for the entire country. And that is why it should be fought by everybody in the country. And that is why we're saying, if it is Nigeria, because Boko Haram is a threat to Nigeria, not a threat to North East. And because it's a threat to Nigeria as a country, the government must begin to think in that line to say, okay, how do we solve this problem? And how do you solve the problem? It's simple. Bring in people from different regions. Let them sit down together. And you will be shocked that you, know, you will get a solution to it. All right. Let, let's, let's take a look at um, the, the reaction from the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan. They rebutted the president's claim saying the federal government has not commissioned any multi-stakeholder survey to ascertain the facts and figures. Do, do you agree with this? I totally and should Khan even be voicing this out? I mean, because it seems like right now we're drawing, we're drawing the line of religion in the fight against insurgency. Two religion, rocks, re, two re, rocks re, cannot make a right. Religion has always played... Yeah. Uh, 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 how would I put Religion has played so much part, a large part, in governance in this in country. Nigeria, yeah. You know. Uh, you could also remember that a few months back, or sometime last year, some Muslim clerics gathered in the north and gave ultimatum. But you see, this is where I have problem with the federal government. Um, it is not everything or every group you respond to. People want to see actions. Yes. So paperwork does not solve the problem. I am particularly not happy with the way federal government is responding, Khan is responding. No. Good. Khan has raised an issue. The federal government can as well ignore it. But look at what they see. I keep telling people, take the message and leave out the message. Yeah. And that's what this government should be doing. It is not everything that anybody says that additional should respond to, Sheikh Garba should respond to. No. There are certain things you, 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 you hear them and you just pretend you didn't hear them, but you put action, you take what has been said that makes sense into it, in it, and you move on. Look at the controversy that came up with Amotekun. Was it necessary in the first place? It was not. You know, so it now looked as if there was a kind of division already going on. All right, I want to read something the president said during the statement. He said, since I was first elected to office in 2015, 107 Chibo girls have been freed. Today, we seek the others. Boko Haram is no longer one unified threat, but fractured into several rivals. And that is him pointing to the fact that there's a kind of victory. There's a kind of... Um, Boko Haram is no longer as, as a strong unified force like they used to be. Would you want to disagree with the president on this? Which one would you prefer? Gang of thieves or split of thieves? None of the two. It is easier yeah. to defeat a gang of thieves than to defeat split of thieves. What we have, a I, 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 few months, few, I think two years back, I wrote um, an article and I said that Nigeria is a country that has, been, that has a lot of small, small splitter groups. Which, he, which is what he said Boko Haram is yes. right now. Yes. Now, those splitter groups are more dangerous than when they're together. Because when, they are, when, when, when you've broken them into bits and pieces, every, nobody, you cannot hold any one of them, anybody, anybody in charge. You don't even know who is in charge of any of the groups. So they're all operating on their own at different frequency. So if the president is saying that Boko Haram has been decimated, as we've been told severally, and then you're talking about small, small groups, how are these groups being formed? Who is forming them? Why are they being formed? I do not want to believe that these groups don't have sponsors. If we cannot recognize who is behind them, then it means that our information gathering has a flaw. Now, all of this is coming on the heels of um, the slain Khan chairman in, uh, and Dimi, and, and the president also made a statement that he's, his death should be an inspiration to us all. I mean, should the death of someone who <laughs> asked the state government and the federal government to come to his rescue is, inspire us? So this is failure on the side of, of leadership, and it's, it's something that we should look into critically and say, you know, our, our security architecture needs help. 
Well, I, I think I think the, whoever wrote that speech for Mr. President, um, it, let's do, let's do, let's, do, let's do not even understand the, the death of Antimi. Yeah, no, that's I, yes, I'm that coming to that. Yeah. They don't understand what sainthood means in, in in Christianity to be a saint. They do not understand because if you are telling us that we should be inspired by this, what you mean is that well, once you are killed by Boko Haram, you should be inspired. Yeah, no, because he, we shouldn't he, didn't, complain. he didn't denounce his faith. He stood for his faith and he was killed in the, in the light of this. And that should serve as an inspiration to, to the Nigerians. When, when you're talking about dead, you're talking about, usually say, you say nothing wrong about the dead. But when you're trying to inspire the living, there are certain things you do not say. That's why I said, whoever wrote that speech for Mr. President is flawed. Something is terribly wrong with that speech. That speech is not meant to bind us together. Because... You cannot be telling somebody who is bereaved that he should, you know, he should be proud of himself, that he lost his father. You don't say that. There are better ways to say things to people that you will not, you will actually appeal to them. Yeah. You suit their pain. But this one, you're not suiting their pain. You're telling them, oh, be gallant in the face of death. Then what is governance for? Because we all know that the first, the, the oath which Mr. President took is to protect the lives and properties of Nigerians. Yes. And if you're not doing that, then you have failed the people. So I'm, I'm not surprised when Senator Baribe asked him to resign. Because these are things he has looked into. Are you in support for the call for his resignation? Yes, I am. All right, let's, let's consider one of his statements before we wrap this segment up. Now, the president assured that his government was committed to bringing to an end the activities of the insurgents, saying that just as my government and our international partners quicken our campaign to defeat Boko Haram within and without our borders, we must turn our minds to the future. This is not the first time we're hearing such from Mr. President. We're all Nigerians. When last did you hear about militants in the Niger Delta? Well, that's, that's, that's almost like almost forgotten. How yes. about IPOB? Oh, well, until Namdi Kanu was, um, his whereabouts was so, on, still so unknown. Yes. Have you traveled from Lagos to the southeast? You will see the number of checkpoints. Why, I, why deploy all the personnel, military personnel, police personnel, to the southeast where there is relative peace and you leave the northeast yeah. or the north where there is war? What is, I don't understand, what is the sense behind it? If the government could go and do what they call crocodile, I mean, um, snake dance or atilogu dance or AK dance in the southeast to curb the menace of IPOB as they claim, what dance have they declared in the far north? Because as it stands right now, the, the Kaduna Abuja Expressway is not safe to ply. I mean, there's been, there's been reported kidnaps and killings. I mean, you see, we, 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 this is where the problem lies. This government must realize that we have a lot of policemen, we have a lot of security personnel. What are they doing? It is time to take away policemen from your so-called VIPs and deploy them to where they are needed. Because this policeman salary is paid from the tax of every Nigerian. VAT has been increased to 7.5. Yes. Nigerians are paying. It is from that same VAT that these people are paid salaries. We, 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 so long as we have our policemen attached to individuals, the issue of policing can never work. Well, we have, they're in shortage already. Just 400,000 policemen govern a country of about 200 million people. Now, there's an allegation in all of this. It's been alleged that the terrorists um, have intensified attacks on Christians to make more money from their victims. Now, their perception is that most of the non-governmental organizations, NGOs, which deal with uh, hard currency have more Christians as their staff and do pay huge amount of hard currencies to get their abducted staff released. Do you, do you, do you, do you in any way, do you share in this? <laughs> no, I don't share in this. Okay. I, I, you know, for me, it's, it's laughable. Um, um, a terrorist is a terrorist. Whether there is money or there is no, no money, money, you know. But the thing is, we know when this thing started with the last, uh, well, the dispensation before the Buhari dispensation, we all took it like a child's play. You know, it was initially for me, I used to tell people, I say it was police and thief. 
They were using Okada then to operate and all of that. Government did not take decisive step to cop them. But I have, as I've lived in Nigeria and I've seen where government has taken decisive step to cop the menace of militants yes. in the Niger Delta. They have called the menace of IPOP in the Southeast. So I do not think, you see, when you talk about the Nigerian army outside Nigeria, the Nigerian police outside Nigeria, yeah. they're they are wonderful. But I think the problem is that our police and our army are not trained for internal protection. They seem to be more involved in external protection. All right, let, let's, let's wrap this up by me asking you this. Was, was there any point in this fight against Boko Haram, the insurgents, you thought Nigeria, the Nigerian um, military, the Nigerian security agencies will have attained maximum victory and we lost the opportunity in doing that? Yes. When, um, if you recall, when the former chief of Mr. Abhi Hejirika. Hejirika, yes. Yeah. We know how, how he handled it. But you see, that, what played out was, these are my people. We need to, they are my children. We need to embrace them. A man who wakes up and comes to your house with a cutlass or a gun, he has made up his mind to either kill you or you kill him. And that is how we must begin to see these guys. Mm. Because they have no pity for you. If a thief enters your house in the night with a gun, it's either you kill him or he kills you. So I think government, we need to remove uh, that mask and face this thing the way it should be. Uh, do you think that the government, is, um, the issue of Boko Haram has been politicized? As many people will, will claim that the issue of Boko Haram has been politicized. Yes, it has. People are making money from Boko Haram. The fight, for, um, the fight over insurgency, people are making money from it. Lives have been lost daily. Collateral damage. People are making money. And then, you know, like, for me, I'm one of those who do not understand this new policy of throwing our borders open. I do not understand. We already have, we have small, we have something we're trying to manage. Yes. And you're throwing the borders open. And you have a country where a lot of our youths are unemployed. The educational system has collapsed. So what would people do? At a point in time, there was a time kidnapping was big business until um, Evans was arrested. arrested. We're still waiting to hear the outcome of his case. But the point is that, you know, the, what steps were taken at that time? We saw, we saw the media hype over his arrest. Yes. And we noticed that, you know, that period, the issue of kidnapping subsided. So what has happened? Francis Chilaka, political analyst, thank you for your contribution in this thank segment. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, stakeholders want the death penalty for bandits. Stay with us. <laughs>